I'm Steve Poland, and this past weekend I was up in Cleveland, and I had to stop in and see what's been going on at the Ohio Fish Rescue. If you missed my tour from a year ago, then definitely watch that before you watch this video. I'll link it below. They have a massive home fish room, where they take in fish that have either outgrown their tanks, or that the owners can no longer care for. Named pets receive a spot in a tank for life, where the owners can come visit them. The rest are rehomed whenever possible. So let's check in with Big Rich and see what's changed since last year. I know he has some big plans. Now this is the 3000. I don't know if you remember from last year, last video. Steve, you did a great video last year. <laughs> this here is uh, a lot of different fish. There is, see this 30 inch uh, Tiger Shovel Nose? That was one of the 19 fish we rescued from Ohio State University. You've got that one there swimming from the left and the one from the back wall. They're bony, they're skinny. I rescued them, there were 19 of them, and I found homes for them. These two I kept. And then you can see my tiger, uh, tiger shovel nose, see how big and thick he is? We're gonna get them fattened up real soon, because we feed them good here. And then we have the alligator gar, platinum, the platinum alligator gars. They sit here, and you gotta watch, because they'll go after your fingers. <laughs> We feed them every day and they're eating good and eating great and growing. Take a look down from on top and you can see how thick they are. There's some big boys. Yeah. And then we have a mantilla stingray mixed with a black diamond, but the rest of them are our breeding stock. And then we still have the uh, tiger datinoid back there that's special needs. He can't see. So we feed these, these baby stingrays three, four times a day, and we leave food in there for like an hour, and he don't have to compete with anybody. So that blind fish can stay alive just by smelling and being able to eat. Uh, so he's, he's, he's a lifer here, and we're gonna take care of him. Then we have my wife's koi tank, and you see it looks like, if you look down, look down the side, it looks like they're they're completely like overcrowded. Spawn off to the left, Steve. Because we're over here, they're thinking they're getting fed. Oh, <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> they they crowd up here thinking they're getting fed, and uh, they won't use the rest of the tank. People have argued with us that the tank's overcrowded, and I'm like, no, they don't use the other side of the tank. <laughs> I'm gonna grab some food and and show you how they they act. They eat three times a day, but every time you feed them, they act like they're starving. And they act like they're piranhas, really. <laughs> Look at them go. <laughs> they're just hungry, hungry, hungry. They just keep eating like that. Now this is the thousand gallon uh, community tank. We have albino iridescent sharks, we have regular iridescent sharks. There's some flag tails in there, some tinfoil barbs, albino tinfoil barbs. They're all over the place there. Here is a black-eared peroon shark. Now he'll get big, but he's a baby right now. Now the silver dollars, you can see uh, spotted silver dollars, striped silver dollars, more spotted, thin bar silver dollars. There is uh, tiger striped silver dollars. Oh, look at that guy, a true spotted gar. Now, a lot of people say their Florida gar are spotted gars, but they're not. That's a true spotted gar. He's beautiful. Over here, we have a 24 inch MBU puffer, a black spotted uh, eel. There's five eels in this tank. They're, they're all over the place. There's fire eels, tire track eels, Black spotted eels, python eels, they're all over the place, but they're hard to see. Come on over here, you can see the Arapaima. Oh, that's a Fly River Turtle, and then the Arapaima guy gets here. These guys are so, just, just cool. There's a Tigrinus in here. There's a Goonch catfish over there. Now over here, we have a few different bikers. On this side, we have a royal clown knife, two albino clown knives, and then two 
high fin uh, Peru sharks and one short body high fin Peru shark. There's two sun cats in there. At the bottom, we have sword tail breeding community and a apple snail breeding community. They just keep having babies. See each one of these things here? These are the babies from the apple snails all over the top. They have thousands of babies and uh, they just keep having babies. If you can look over here, you've got big red tails, you've got an Indian red uh, tiger shovel nose, you got a, a barb there. Here's a half breed between a tiger shovel nose and a red tail. And this guy right here, this is neat. You gotta look at him. He is a uh, firewood cat, a planiceps cat. I mean, there's like five different names for the cat. He's a true planiceps firewood cat. And her name is Daria. Let me see if I can get her to swim. Look at how gorgeous she is. She's about four foot long now. 38 inches to 40 inches. She's gorgeous. Now looking here, if you can look lower and look up, you can see the um, snow white arowanas. Aren't they gorgeous? Do you see them? Yeah. And then in the bottom we have true parabas, the true filamentosus. They will get up to nine foot long. They're something amazing. These are things my son bought for me. Now this thousand gallon tank, this is fish that people bring in that I can give out or I'm in the process of acclimating and quarantining for to go into our tank system. Uh, right now we have five pakus that we can give out. Today we just got the three albino channel cats, the two, uh, uh, what do you call these guys? Leperinus, thank you. And the two red tails. They have to go into our tanks. And a two foot plinko, where's he at? Oh, there he is in the back. Them are, are all named pets that people want to come here and visit and see their pets. So we keep them. So right now we still have four Paku we can give out. If anybody wants a Paku, Come by and talk to us. Yeah. These are some babies my son bought for me because I don't know if you guys remember, but I had a big 30 inch African arrow. Well, he died of old age. So my son bought me three young ones and we feed them about six times a day to keep them feeding. So that's why it's a little bit dirty in there, but they're filter feeders until they're 12 inches. Then they'll start eating shrimp. So we have to keep feeding them blood worms and that's that tank there. Now this tank, this turns out to be, you can see there's a green Texas there, a uh, Florida Gar here. There is a Littoral Stingray, a bunch of different uh, Oscars. We've tried keeping all the named Oscars, all the long finned Oscars and all the albino Oscars. And this was the albino Oscar breeding tank. But we've had to use it with, you see the, the lungfish back there, that's an African lungfish. And then over here, there's two vulture cats. There's a sun cat in there. There's a zingu cat or a Chinese wells. And then there's a, uh, what do you want to call him? A Megalodorus arwini, which got changed its name classification to Megalodorus uranoscopes. So, and then here's a Wixie cat. Uh, we've had to do this because these guys were too small to be in the, in, in the big tank and they're too big to be in the small tanks. So we've had to use this as an intermediate uh, fish tank. How many gallons is this? This is a 750 gallon. Okay. Come on over here and you can see the uh, cichlid tank. Now in all the cichlid tanks, we don't have no South American cichlids, no new world cichlids in here. It's all old world, uh, Lake Tanganyika, Lake Malloway. And then we have two fish that shouldn't be in here that get along in here. 
One is a leaf fish. He's right here. He's also considered a cichlid. And the other one is, he's always in the back. Oh, right there. An Abramite headstander. He gets along and nobody kills him in here. So they, they get to stay. But other than that, we have a bunch of uh, stuff on the bottom to let the babies hatch and the uh, big ones can't get to them. So, because there's forever, I mean, if we look right now, we'll see three or four fish holding in their mouth. Uh, their mouth brooders and uh, it's hard for us to actually catch them take the babies out raise them blah 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 but if, if you look closely down in the, the the little different areas you'll find babies from a quarter inch to a half inch to an inch long right. now this tank here this is a, a a treatment tank these guys have to see the little uh, foam fungus stuff on their side. He's almost cured. He has some left. We're treating that for fungus right now and you know letting that go. Now there is some do you see these uh, sword tails? They're like paradise sword tails. They have double tails, veil tails. They're just beautiful. Um, and then there's regular sword tails and then females and they just keep having babies. Down in the bottom here, we have tiger barbs. We have synodonis cats. Over here, you have a, a striped Raphael cat. And then there's an Adonis placo. Now, Adonis placos, they get up to three foot uh, in length. They get big. But right now, it's a community tank. This here is a thousand gallon tank we got from SeaWorld when they closed down. It's eight foot by four foot by four foot. And this one here, come on up this way. This is a 16 foot by four foot by four foot. Came from the same place, SeaWorld. And uh, that was the whole reason we, were, we built the addition. Come on over here and I'll show you that. This was where the, the fish room ended. Now this is the new addition. Josh, Tracy, somebody? Okay, we brought this 550 in. It's sitting inside now. Um, over here, we have the 2200. Now it's six foot, four inches wide and 16 foot long. This tank is going to be one of our show pieces where you know, all of our tanks up till now have been for necessity. A, a fish this big will eat a fish this big. We can't put them in together. So we put all the big fish this size together in one tank, all the fish this size together in a tank, all the fish this size together in a tank. We don't have any tanks that we can show off as our We've, we've decorated this for a show-off tank. This is going to be our one tank that we're going to show off. This thing here, we're going to put black tile in, and then all of our uh, albino, all of our platinum, all of our xanthic fish are all going to go in here for show. The big guys, the platinum gars, the albino arowana, the albino clown knife, and this is the only thing that we have done for ourselves, basically, is we bought this tank. We're going to use this as a showpiece. People come in and go, wow, you know? Yeah. The rest is basically done for size of fish, and we take care of the fish. This here, this here wall, this is what's all coming out. And then this will be an extension of that room. talking about the 4400 that's that's this big right here you can take all the video you want of it all them albinos are going into the 2200 and this is our there's, there's nothing but you know fish in there that are named and that are they're, they're lifers this is their lifer tank right here we have 
Sir Heisenberg von Fishface. This is Bert. We have, uh, oh, here comes Schwarzenegger. Look at him swimming up front. Hi, buddy. There he comes. He's been with us for 17 years. He's about 40 pounds, 45 pounds. And the cloud knife underneath him is named Skittles. Um, I can't remember all the names. That <laughs> That's a lot of fish to remember. Right. A lot oh, of names. Uh, these guys down here, uh, one of them, I don't remember which one, but one of them is named Toothless from How to Train Your Dragon. Right. And uh, let me see. Very cool. You can't tell how big this tank is on a video. It's just, I mean, it's taller than I am. How deep is it? Would you like me to hold that so you can stand in front of right. the video? <laughs> that's, that's all right. Well, maybe we'll post a picture. But uh, it it's has deep. 14 foot long. Okay. Which is, the glass is three inches thick by 14 foot. It's six foot tall and it's seven foot from front to back. Yeah. Now, everybody says it's overcrowded but they don't get to see it from the side. Right. All these fish come to the front and there's seven foot of openness behind them. Yeah, they don't realize how uh, big the tank is. It's, it's 4,400 gallons. Yeah, it's deeper than it is tall. And that's, it doesn't look that way. It's hard to get that perspective just looking at it, but yeah. Right. Really cool. Don't tell nobody, okay? This is something I'm hiding from my wife. She's forbid me, <laughs> but come on. Now, see my pool? Go ahead and take a span of that. Yeah. It's down to 15 feet on that side. Over here, it's three foot feet. <laughs> now, you guys may have seen this before. I had a video of us, me and Tracy, carrying koi out to the back pond, and we we're carrying it. And one of the koi spazzed out, and he jumped up and it hit the lid, and the lid bent up like this so the koi hit the lid and went that way and I was like oh oh no chlorine <laughs> and I'm, I'm trying frantically to I'm, I'm spazzing out I'm trying frantically to catch him and every time I put a net and he'd swim to the other side it was crazy I'm trying to help you <laughs> well the point was I saw him leaning against the, the, the side over there and if you look down here and I put my foot under here there is a four inch lip Okay, so what I did was I walked around the other side and I stayed way back until I can just see his one fin and then I dove at him with a net and I'm like, scoop, and I got him. <laughs> so I took him out and put him in the, the koi pond, but I'm like thinking, he lived for 10 minutes in a chlorinated pool. Well, luckily it turned out I was slacking on my job and the pool wasn't that chlorinated. It had been, you know, three weeks since I had added chlorine. So my idea was, let's turn that into a fish pond. My wife was like, absolutely not. <laughs> she likes to get into the pool and we keep it at 84 degrees. When she gets in, she's like, oh, it's so warm, like a warm bath. Well, that's what she didn't want to change. So here, here we keep it at 84 but I have not put chlorine in it since. It's been two and a half months. I've just tried different algae sides, and if you look, there's barely any algae in there, and we've got fresh sunlight coming in from above. So, the algae side has worked. She don't know it, but I've got four goldfish that have been in there for the last month and a half. I'm going to turn this into a, a, a natural living pond, okay? The, the point is, I need to get the fish in there, but you know, not every fish likes 84 degrees, but we tested the temperature at the bottom at 72. So if the fish go in there, they can level out at the temperature they like. It's warmer at the top. So goldfish and koi will be lower. The Arapima will be at the top because they like 85, 90 degrees. Now, if I can get that, I will be in love with this whole setup, you know? I just gotta talk her into it. Right. <laughs> Guys, that's all I need to do. <laughs> cool. Well, it sounds so, like you got some big plans. Um, yeah, because this is 58,000 gallons. 
And if I can get the, the Pima in there, the Pareva, the, the uh, iridescent sharks, the black-eared Peroon sharks, all the big fish that are going to get big, I'm willing to put up a whole like uh, river of gravel and pond plants to make it a natural bog filter to where you're, you're swimming in a natural river. Yeah, what's better than that? Right, what's better than that? Yeah. Swim with your fishes. Very cool. <laughs> well, Rich, I appreciate you taking us around again and showing us everything that's changed. And uh, guys, if you like what Rich and the Ohio Fish Rescue are doing, uh, we're gonna put links down in the video description where you can, uh, well, first of all, you can join their really cool Facebook group. Uh, you can follow their YouTube channel. And also you have several different ways that you can uh, donate uh, and help them out with all the costs that, that it takes to run a place like this. So uh, thanks again, Rich. And uh, we'll have to come back and see you again next time. Steve, you're always welcome here, brother. All right, thank you. You're a good man. <laughs>